stuff. So welcome to the first, uh, well, the first game of the third set of the day of the, uh, well, the group stage uh, between Kasva and the Viper uh, as Viper got housed. Oh, boo, look at that. Look at that idle TC time. Unacceptable. Unacceptable. Uh, all good, lots to do. Uh, uh, anyways, go Kasva. Ooh, we have a Kasva fan here. I mean, like, we'll see what he can do here. We'll see what he can do. I, I have faith in him. He made it all the way through all the qualifier rounds. And then, uh, you know. Uh, all right. And then into the round of 16. That was the most important part. <laughs> Oops. You gotta finish my stories now, don't I? Uh, in any case, let's look at what civilizations we got. We got Tootens for the Viper. And we got Saracens for Kasva. Ooh. Like... Again, this is again, uh, again an instance in which a pro, a pro player picks sieves and then picks the last, uh, picks uh, picks the last sieve that he picked. You know, Tutan was the last one in the draft, so it's interesting that he picks that. I just like to see him take some games off a of viper. Uh, me too. Yeah, me too. And it's nothing against the viper. I just want to go to game five. Those are the exciting sets. You know, it's like a uh, who's gonna win. That's why, like, I my heart almost stopped twenty times uh, last week in that set between Viper and Say My Name because, well, it was five games and it was uh, an epic set, epic series. I might just upload that to YouTube, anyways. Then maybe. Anyways, um, well, at the game at hand though. So, um, hmm. Let's talk about the map first. We can do that real quickly uh, before things get started. As Viper is. <laughs> dancing around with his scout. You see that he was twirling around like that. Uh, that's kind of funny. Uh, I wonder if he's going to go for the lame. I mean, Viper is a player that can lame, but doesn't always do that, right? He's not like a lamer boy like MBL. You know, Viper has always been the, you know, the ma like the macro expert who also had great micro. Best all-round player, uh, you could say. That's what made him the best for so long as well. So... Yeah, but I mean, he's not like notorious for laming. Not like a backed, a Vivi, a MBL, you know. So I don't think that's going to happen. Any case, uh, as for Gasper's base, got a forward gold, though, uh, between three hills. Wow, that is probably one of the worst golds that uh, you could uh, expect on a map like this. Like, it's just in between the hills, not even on a hill. That would at least redeem it a little bit. Four are berries for Kasva as well, but he has a back gold to fall back on. And oh, actually another back gold. So he does have all these back golds to compensate for the fact that his main gold is kind of shite. Uh, so that's kind of nice, right? That's kind of nice. Uh, wood lines are not too big. They're quite far away from the DC on average. I mean, like medium range, right? It's, ooh, Viper taking a shot on his scout from the DC. That will mean Kasva can now win the scout war. Because he hasn't taken a shot on his scout just yet. But also he hasn't found the viper yet. But he should know now. Sees the gold. Sees the, the, the zebra. He should know now. Okay, I need to go this way. Because if you see a four tile gold. That is always going to be close to your opponent. As. Oh. Kasva is like. Yeah, that's nice. You don't have loom on your villagers yet. And that villager is exposed. She's going to go down. But yeah, viper. He won't. Did he wall in the scout? No, right? Oh, oh, wow. Okay, so the Palisade wall goes down and he places another one before the freaking scout comes in and Castle would just be like, oh, crap, I forgot. It's up. I'm up against the Viper and this this freaking dude quick walls like a god. He almost walled in the scout. That's how bad it was. Oh, no. It's still a weak villager. Uh, it doesn't have loom just yet. One hit and it would have died, but uh, I threw two hits, I guess. Uh, just Viper stuff, I guess. Just Viper stuff. <laughs> Anyways, Fur Viper has an... Uh, well, actually, if I said if I said uh, Kasva's gold was bad, this one's way worse. It's really open on this side. A giant hill on the front of your base. And your gold is there. And, yeah, only one back gold for the Viper. His other gold is right there. It's quite far out. Wood lines are as awkward as they are for Kasva. Although they seem to be, to be a bit further away even. So Viper's base, definitely no ha map hacks here. That's probably what was written in the script as well, uh, you know, like uh, you know, anti-map hacks. If the if if player is Viper, make map bad. You know, you could actually script that. Pretty sure. Could you though? Maybe not. If it's a scenario though, you probably could. Or could you though? Maybe not too. Okay, I'm just talking out of my ass like usually. Anyways, game. 
Um, yeah, Casper is going to wall off the top side. And again, remember, because of this back gold, he has lots of options gold-wise. And walling right here also safeguards that gold a little bit. So if he loses control of this gold, that's got some options. It looks like it's going to be scouts for Casper. He's not on gold, and he's walling this gold out. So he's not even going to go to the main gold. So I guess if he's going to go to gold, it will be down here. Uh, I, I, can, I can see why. I can see why. Viper, though, he's not going to do any of that. He's just going to go... What is he actually going to do? He's going to go up. He didn't make any men at arms. So I guess straight archers then. Three villages on, on gold. Hmm. Interesting. Yep, there comes the archery range. Now, Teuton archers are decent, right? You get... Um, I think you get Arbalest, but you do not get Bracer, as you can see. So, uh, you know, it's not... It doesn't scale well into the late game, but it's... It's fine for Teutons at first. Better than Scouts, at least, because... Well, not, not better than Scouts, but at least with, with, with uh, Archers, you can upgrade them in Castle Age. You can't upgrade your Scouts in Castle Age. Yeah, it's, uh, it's impossible. Teutons don't get Light Cap, which is uh, kind of a problem. It actually gives them the worst rating options beyond, uh, uh, you know, if you don't count uh, 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 Mesosifs there. Because they don't have uh, they don't have Asaras either, which is uh, kind of a big loss in the late game, or even light cap. You know, you saw even Viking light cap can do a, a, a lot of good. You know, if you know how to use it. As a uh, Kasva has gotten his base well walled up as well. I like the market wall there to finish the wall. So cheap, it's cheap anyways with Saracens, and you're probably going to be using using it anyways to sell your stone, get your food kind up, buy your way to castles, that kind of yada yada. Scouts. Now coming out for Kasva, well, Viper is going to defend himself with some Spearmen. And I think he's probably going to play it safe for now. Wall at the bottom here. Gold is part of the wall, but whatever. It's really this gold that is more important. And since your opponent is not going to go for... It's not going to go for a, a ranged unit right now. Uh, this gold is actually still safe. It's walled in anyway, so it's fine. As uh, Viper sends forward a small ar army with some spearmen over here. The spearmen engage against the scouts. One scout for Castle already down, another scout really weak. Ooh, good engagement there for Viper. Knew exactly where the scouts were going to go. And uh, Castle kind of running into spears, literally. And yeah, that's the thing. That's the thing. Viper does have ranged units. They might not have fletching just yet, but they will deny the berries nonetheless. You can't defend against that with just walls. Archer range going up for Chaos for now. He probably wants to get out some skirmishers or archers of his own to uh, combat this. He's going to go to gold though right now with villages. That might actually be uh, archers instead of skirmishers. Uh, it's the preferable one of the two after all. Because you're Saracens. Saracen archers of course do bonus damage versus buildings. Uh, you know, so this stable would go really go down way faster if, if uh, Viper was Saracens. Still not very fast because again... You know, it's two spearmen and two archers. It's not like, not really like an Armageddon army or anything like that. Hmm. Scouts coming forward from Kasva hasn't even hasn't been able to do a whole lot of damage so far. I mean, the KD still favors the Viper in the end because he killed that scout. Market going up in the back of Viper's base, which kind of acts as part of his walls as well. Uh, yeah, the scouts coming forward on this side, but yeah, the spearmen everywhere. Spearmen everywhere, it's too easy to do that as well, you know. Yeah, like, like, posting spearmen, like, that's exactly what they're made for. Just posting them around, making sure that your opponent can't get in with scouts. It's, uh, it's beautiful. As uh, Viper is just like, yeah, I, I mean... You know, I'm just, I'm not gonna make a whole lot of military here. I'm just gonna go to Castellates, and look, Viper... Selling some wood, buying some food, and he's just gonna macro his way to a Castellates, and Castellates is, yeah... That's the same number of villagers, but uh, he's so far away from Gaslates right now. And that's the downside of going scouts as well. That's a lot of food investment. That was five, five scouts invested. Still investing more in scouts. You know, now Viper is open, right? Viper is open. He has some ranged units uh, to help deal with the spearmen now. So it's not like there can't be... That no damage can be done here as Viper clicks up. This is a critical moment. Will he be able to do damage to Viper before Knights come out? Because I should imagine that it's going to be Knights for the Viper uh, going forward. Although he's still making archers. Probably for the best because uh, some range units are making their way to his base. Scouts now showing up as well. As Viper is just going to abandon his gold. He knows it's just... Yeah, I'm going to get pushed off of that anyway. So I might as well just leave now before uh, these scouts can kill my villagers. 
Let's see what kind of unit. Okay, stable has gone up for the Viper. So it is definitely going to be knights, but not a whole lot of knights because, well, doesn't quite have the numbers for uh, the gold for that one. As, yeah, Kaspa is still buying. He's buying wood right now for gold. Uh, you know, it might still only be 105 gold. Oh no, he misclicked! He misclicked! He didn't mean to buy wood, he meant to buy food. I was about to say, like, why would you buy wood? It's because he misclicked. Look, he sold it again and then bought food. Oh, that blows. That sucks. It's, yeah, it's hard to avoid, though. That, uh, that sometimes, I, I make that mistake as well. I sometimes accidentally click the wrong, uh, the wrong button. As, uh, now, uh, Kaspa is gonna go... Or the stable, I guess. I mean, at some point you will get that down. At some point, but... Now it's knights. Now it's gonna be knights for the Viper. And Castle's gonna have to defend himself. Or go all in feudal. And honestly, when you're this far away from Castellates, do you have another choice? I mean, it's not... This it wouldn't be the first time that Kaspa has encountered this, actually. Although, uh, in the in the set between Vivi and him uh, last week, it was actually Kaspa who was going forward with a lot of military uh, in Castellate. And Vivi was the one who defended all in. And Kaspa drops his, his uh, barracks in front of the Viper's base. He's making a whole lot of military right now. Well, a whole lot. He's making a, a number of military. But the thing is... It's just, you just can't get the castle age. You're just never going to get the castle age. He's just forced to make spearmen now. Come forward with villagers to tower and shit like that. He's on stone, actually, so it actually is going to be a tower. He sold a stone earlier, I think, or at least one. He sold at least 100 stone. As the Viper, yeah, he still has a gold in the back, so he could always drop a TC right here uh, to keep himself protected. And so, yeah, for now, he can't deal with this man, much military. He's not just yet, but a few knights would clean all of this, so... A few knights and a few archers, yeah, you're fine. You're fine. Although it's better to attack with all the knights at the same time. Remember that Viper doesn't have a lot of gold either. He still needs to go to gold, and that's what he's going to do right now. That's probably going to be a TC, right? Please make it be a TC, that's safer. Uh, is Viper still, you know, lot, militarily very far behind here. There's a lot of places that could get raided. So Viper does drop a TC, very good. Because if Gaspar knows about this gold, and he does, he could scout that. He could scout to see, is Viper taking gold there? If he's not, because if he continues to see knights, he has to conclude, somewhere, Viper is getting gold. Somewhere, right? I mean, it has to be. I mean, if he's just selling stuff, for gold, yes, that's one way to go. But there's, you could tell by the market, right? If the prices get uh, get, uh, you know, if it gets cheaper to buy stuff again, that means you, you then you know your opponent has been selling. We've got another tower going up. But yeah, Kaspar. I mean, he's still bringing, trying to bring up his uh, his food count, but with nine farms, it's just going to be very slow, very very slow, and a lot of resources also also stuck in in the in the in the. Producing more villages and producing more military, so yeah. Down center is up, so at least Kaspa cannot hit this side. And yeah, that's that's gold that cannot be denied anymore. Which means that knights will continue to come out. And Viper, he's not even going to bother with this army at the front. Instead, he's just going to send it right into Kaspa's base. Knights only have one armor upgrade, so they're not like very imposing or anything like that. But still. But still. Upgrades coming in on the scouts. And yeah, full feudal is the idea, but... What are you going to do against knights in your base? And so, yeah, by, uh, God's fine. Walling in his villager now to go for some berry aggression. Now, did I say berry aggression? I mean just do some safe berry picking. Safe from aggression. Stable getting close is getting close to getting killed here. As the spearmen are definitely taking out the knights here. I mean, enough spearmen with upgrades will definitely kill knights. You know, like, obviously. Stable is going to go down as well. So, I mean, the Viper was using that to make knights for now, but that's not going to last too long, as he will probably have to uh, abandon more of these farms. And his army can make their way closer into Viper's base. So, Kaspe is still doing a great job, at least keeping in enough pressure on uh, the Viper. And he's not just doing a little bit of half pressure, right? Uh, uh, you know, he's also committing with towers. Hmm, question. Overall, do you believe Viper has lost the edge of, or if other players have improved the last two years? Now, the second one is definitely true. The second one is definitely true. I think other players have definitely uh, caught up with the Viper. I mean, it's kind of like, you know, with Napoleon, right? Like how Napoleon was the best 
general for a long time in Europe and all the other European powers started copying Napoleon and got and Napoleon didn't get worse at war it's just the, the allies got better at stopping Napoleon and using his strategies against him that said though and I'm going by what T90 remarked once when he was casting the Viper during Rebel Wolo and I can see that is that Viper takes he is it, it, like he took less risks as a player right took less risk went for less all-in approaches before and i think that's also because he never felt the need to have to do that because he was the better player period you know like it was always about like who could take a game off a of viper never who can beat viper every time you know yeah, but once people started consistently beating him here and there as well you know like he must he must have also just like uh, adapted his play style a little bit as he you know as he became matured as a player as well uh you know, pro probably sometimes feels the need to go for some extra shenanigans uh, when he's up against players that can could beat him potentially. As Casper's Tower Rush is getting uh, destroyed right now, and knights are still running through his economy, but he is up the uh, castle age. Hope that answers your question a little bit. I mean, like, uh, like, do I still think that the Viper is one of the best players in the world? Yes. Do I think he's the best player in the world? I'm not so sure about that anymore. But for me, mostly because players have, like, other players have really improved. Like, like players like Yo and, like, Larry were always on par with the Viper, but Viper is always a step ahead. But, like, someone like like Hera, for example, like, his play in uh, early on, like, in, 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 in uh, Hidden Cup 2 and 3 wasn't as good as it was by the time of Hidden Cup 4. Like, he's a really well-rounded player now who could take games of a Viper, can even consistently beat the guy. So... That'd be my opinion. Just my opinion, obviously. Well, Casva does make it to Castle Age. Castle Casva. I mean, again, the Viper, he has been in Castle Age, but all that pressure from Casva has definitely, definitely uh, put some, uh, you know, put a strain on his economy. But, I mean, look at that Vil count. 73 villagers for Viper, only 45 for Casva. So if Casva, even though he makes it to Castle Age, that's no time to sit on your ass. He has to start pushing. He has to keep putting pressure on the Viper. Because the Viper already has the Vil lead. As he's trying to quit calling the Villager. And that does not work out. So unfortunately FTC is denied for now. As uh, Viper will have to run down some more Villagers to get that 4th TC up. Yes, 4 TCs. I mean, Viper could also rush down these towers, honestly. As Kaspar is still fort with these Villagers. is building stables for it as well. Something that Viper... Does not know about, although he could see the stone being taken, right? If uh, if more stone gets taken. Like, at some point you can see, you can tell. More military coming forward. Like I said, Kaspa is probably going to stream for military. Yeah, the military count, 3 to 12. And again, this is one of what I was talking about. Or what T90 was talking about. But the risks that Viper takes nowadays. Like, I don't think quite this would have happened three years ago, right? Like... It would have been a situation in which Viper is making barely any military, right? And the opponent tries to go all in to stop him and it just doesn't work because Viper is a really good defensive player and a macro player. A macro God, 84 villages to 49. It's really good. But, I mean, there is still a potential for Kasva here, right? Like, he's coming forward with a castle now. Like, that sort of stuff. Like, like that, that was the beauty of watching Viper always is that, you know, he was able to get away with greed like that. But he, without taking too much damage. And he has definitely taken some damage here. I mean, the Eco Kitty is uh, very even because of that counter raid on Kasva with the Knights. But, I mean, now a castle going up and Viper's going to counter with his own castle as well. A castle that's not going to deny this castle. So both castles should go up here. We can actually watch the race between the two. There you go. Kasva slightly behind Viper with more villagers. Should get his castle up uh, first. Yeah, it's not even close. It's not even close. It's... Uh, Kaspa already running away some of his villagers because one crossbow is, is kind of slowing down this castle. Oh my god, this one crossbow! This Viper thinks, man. And now Kaspa's like, oh, shit. I mean, it's slowing it down. I can't deny the castle. But still, still, right? Should go up, but uh, Viper's castle already had a head start in the castle war. So at least there's that. Both castles have fletching, so there's that. Yeah, the army count for a Viper is still is similar to it uh, to the army count for Kaspa, but look at that. Going up the imp, man, that's not even cool. Uh, it's a right call, though. It's a right call, but yeah, just fantastic, though. 
Like, just look, look at Viper's base. How is this guy going up to imp with 104 villagers? How? As Gaspar's trying to raid in his base, Gaspar's trying to make something of everything, some cavalry archers, and he knows, he knows, he knows he, that Viper is up to imp, and he's gonna try to save himself with the, the Saracen market bowman, but as you can see, at this point, he is just buying food at normal price. Uh, you know, it's gonna get it, it, it beyond normal price now, you know, it's gonna get expensive for him as well. And Viper just has the better economy, and, and Kaspa has 14 military on the field. As Viper quick walls out the knight, very nice, keeping that outside as well. It, you know, some extra shots with the TC on that. And now Kaspa's kind of stuck in between a rock and a hard place. I'll have to run away with this army now. Uh, lacking husbandry on these units, by the way. Yeah, I think so. Cavalry archers are way too slow. Way too slow. Yeah, there's definitely no husbandry on those. Making more cavalry archers, but I mean, cavalry archers with the, with with Saracens not the worst. I mean, you get all your upgrades. Uh, Saracens have one of the most open tech trees in the game, which is also why pros really like it. It's really like it's like Chinese. You have options, except Chinese get it all for you know cheap. Now he's gonna be in Imperial Age as well, but a full minute behind the Viper, which means the Viper can get a head start with the trap war, and also I think if he maybe gets on the hill, then the hill though bonus. Mm. I don't think... Okay, maybe not that, but uh, in any case. 118 villagers for the Viper. 52 for Kaspar. And like I said, you know, that is kind of classic Viper, right? You do all this aggression, all this effort, and he's still alive, and he's still an imp, and he still has double your, the amount of villagers. It's top... It's peak peak Viper, and Kaspar just calls the GG because he knows he's not been able to kill the snake. He's been doing so much damage, but none of it was fatal. None of it was vital. And that's also because Viper just kept moving his economy, kept expanding, booming like a like a god, and there you go. Also help by the fact that Tutan farms are way cheaper. Now I'm kind of kind of sad that we didn't get to see Mamelukes versus Teutonic Knights, which would have been a very bad matchup for Mamelukes, by the way. They do ranged melee attack. They do not do well against Teutons. They do one damage versus Teutons. If you're in CBA and you get stuck with Saracens against Teutons, you better make sure that you have a teammate that can protect yourself there. Because uh, <laughs> that will kill you. They will definitely kill you. Hmm. Oh, yeah, right, I should update the scoreboard. There we go. A nice win for Viper. And it just... He makes it look so easy too, but it wasn't easy. This was uh, a lot of pressure that Kasva put on the table, and this is good. This is the kind of stuff that Kasva needs to do here uh, to beat the Viper, because meta play is not going to save you. Like, Viper is the better meta player. That's I don't think that's safe to say. What Kasva needs to do, he needs to make it messy. Make it as messy as he can do. Like, make it difficult for the snake. Allow, don't allow the snake to just carry out his little plan uh, of victory, right? Don't let him be greedy or things like that i mean that's that's more difficult than you know it's harder said than done yes i know that but I'm, you know i'm just saying that's probably the the best way for an underdog player to beat the over like the the top dog player is when you make it messy uh more more gray area and skill there slightly better kd for the viper here you know he did lose some villagers there uh, some villagers there a lot of a few units there here and there as well especially some knights in small groups but in the end, yeah, just the army numbers start to rise, and then there's hard to... Uh, but it's, when you're this far behind, there is not a lot you can do. It wasn't very close at this point anymore. I mean, look at that Vilkam. Like, he was on so much pressure, and he just boomed. Bam, like crazy. Yeah. That way more re economy as well. Double the villagers. I mean, it's not that's not even close. And... Uh, APM quite similar as we had a little uh, something battle over there, probably with the scouts, probably would, wouldn't surprise me. GG! Uh, bup, 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 bup. Let me update the score, that will be score number one for the Viper, perfect stuff. Uh, there we go, so we can see that as well. Now, let's check the Discord, we got a game too, let's get into that, we don't want to fall behind too far now, do we? Um, so let me get into that in a second. Can't take so long. Uh, da, 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 da. Yep, there we go. Go for the next game. Let's see what Kasva can do on his home map. You know, Arabia. <laughs> As we have uh, speculate. 84 seconds. Whoa. Why are you making us wait so long? What's the big idea? 
Nah, it's okay. It's okay. I guess we can look at the draft real quick here. Here you go. Here you go. We can look at the draft. Let's see. Uh, Kasva losing with Saracens. Viper winning with Tutan. So both players going for their last pick. Interesting. I wonder if they're now going to go for their first pick. Mayans versus Franks. Although, honestly, if you... if It's kind of funny how Viper has a lot of Archer Sips. Kasva doesn't really have a single Archer Sip. Like, Mongols doesn't really qualify as an Archer Sip, in my opinion. Like the cavalry archer sip, yes. Archer sip, yeah, not really. Not really. Sicilians can do it, but not the best. Khmer, Indians, Franks, also not their strong uh, strong uh, suit. So what are we going to do against Britons and Mayans? That's what Gauss needs to think about. I think Sicilians are a great counter to either of these as well. Just because Sicilians are OP. Indians, I would say for Huns, probably. Uh, Huns or or maybe Burgundians actually because Burgundians are way weaker against Indians than Huns are. Uh, Khmer, that could be Huns though with the spam and then M Mongols versus Byzantines. I don't know. And yeah, Franks whenever, right? Franks whenever you feel like you need to win, because that's what Franks are good for. As four seconds, game about to start. Let's go. Right, timing is right. Needed to load and I need to be in time to stop it from speeding up because for some reason it keeps doing that because, well, why not? And boom, there we go. Awesome stuff. Welcome to the second game between the Viper and Kasva. The Viper in the yellow and Kasva in the red as usual. Um, now the first game, of course, went to the Viper, as she can see on the scoreboard up there. Let's see what the Viper's gone for. Britons for the Viper. See, I expected as much. Uh, maybe either Mayans or Britons, you know, they're his first two picks on the draft. Uh, Kasva, though, probably feels, you know, the need to get a win here as well. Goes for one of the strongest saves on his draft, and that is Franks. And Franks are a very difficult save to deal with. You know, the cavalry spam is real. Um... You know, and definitely in late game, if the Britons don't have a sizable Helvedir army out, then Franks can definitely come around with a Paladin and smack ass. Uh, no, uh, whoop ass, that's the word. But that's late game. And we're also up against the Viper, a player with a re with real good micro as well. So let's see what Kaspa can do, actually. You know, you cannot... I don't think he can get away with just playing the standard. Like, I'm talking about just... I mean, playing Frank's standard here, like... Just going into scouts and then into knights and then into cavalier and then maybe into paladin you know like it is the the most straightforward game plan in the game really uh beyond not besides britain archers you know britain archers even more so than franks honestly but it's predictable at that as well so we'll see how viper is going to counter that and what um uh what Kaspar's plan is going to be. I'm curious. Now, let's look at this map because we can always tell a little bit what plan, what strategy you could potentially go for looking at the map. So, if you look at Kaspar's map, the wood lines aren't too close by. So, that's a lot of walling if you wanted to wall yourself there. Although, Franks don't need to wall as much as Britons do. Back gold for the Kaspar player. So, that's great for him. Back berries as well. Yay, that's a good map for him. Uh, you know, as good as it gets, that is. Hey, it's an upside down T. That's my stone. I lay, I, I hereby lay claim to this T-shaped stone. It uh, has my name on it. Forward gold as well for Kasva and a back gold for him. Yeah, his map is not the bad, too bad, honestly. I like this map. It's good. You know, he has some close by stone just if you need some cheap Frank castles. Uh, that's good stuff. It's Viper. Oh, he could lame some goats. Oh, that's close. If he had gone to the left, those goats would have been Vipers. Not so much now. If he thinks about laming this, though, he's kind of hanging around here, not knowing where the TC is. He's getting very close now. Sees the should see the tapestry. Okay, now he knows. Now he knows. Don't get too close here. Uh, if he's gonna lame, we'll, we'll we'll pay attention to that. Any case, look at the other side here for the viper. No map hacks for him this time around as well. Forward berries, forward gold, uh, another forward gold as well. And where's the third gold? Uh oh, not too bit, not too good. Actually, these three golds are awful. Look at all the golds for Viper. If you thought that what, uh, you know, if if you thought that he could get away uh with um, what he did last game, which is greedy boom, that's gonna be way more difficult this time around because there's no back gold to fall back on here. 
All the golds are forward, the berries are forward, most of your wood lines are kind of forward as well. Actually, that hardly qualifies as a wood line at all. I mean, at least Castro's wood line has at least this little chump of wood. Not so much for Viper, so that doesn't really count. So he really only has three. That said, this is an awkward wood line as well, so, you know. It evens out. But still, Viper has an aggressive map here. Which is a problem if you're Britons, because that's not really your, your strong suit. All-out aggression, like a Hunt player would do, or Franks would do. That's not really what Britain's all about. It's all about the slow, meth methodical pushes, right? Down the middle. The unstoppable powerball uh, of, of, of British archers. It's just... It's difficult to deal with, as Gaspa is pushing in his Austrates. As a result, sacrificing valuable scouting information, uh, which Viper will have. It's difficult to deal with, but, you know... Um, what was I gonna say here? Oh, right. But there's a way. There's a way for Gasper to stop it now because all the golds are forward. If he can deny these golds, like the aggression that he did last time, will be way more successful this time around. If he can actually tower all these golds, for example, like he did, that's pretty good. Let's see how that's gonna go as we have a scout engagement. Ooh, if I were Casper, yeah, exactly. Don't enga don't engage against the scout. Don't do it. You haven't scouted your opponent yet. Even if you win it, you're still at one HP or something like that. That's not worth it. And knowing the snake, GL players always win these freaking battles. Casper will know that as well. GL players always win those freaking scout wars. I don't know what it is, but yeah. Used to be the case that player one would always win because uh, he, he got prioritized by the game server or something like that. I'm not sure how that works, but uh, that's not the case anymore. At least the devs say it's not the case. But do we believe them, right? Do we believe the devs? Anyways. As Viper might be pushing in some Zebra as well, but you know what I like about the Viper's position is like he has already scout scouted a whole lot of, of Casper's base and has seen these walls as well. Uh, that's good. My scout spy is still, you know, still has to scout the Viper. Doesn't know what the Viper's gonna go for. Although, although, Britons, what do you think he's gonna go for? It is obviously gonna go for, uh, for archers here. As Caspar now sees that gold. His scout, although, has taken some, uh, damage here. But it's a Frank scout. It should be able to kill a, a villager here. It should be able to kill a vill. For sure. Beamer coming out for this uh, for this the snake just to start attacking Kasva maybe a little bit. Scouts for Kasva. I mean again, like I said, just because uh Kasva should probably play this a bit more messy doesn't mean you can't open scouts here. It is it is the best opening for Franks by by far. Especially because of that forage bonus that you get, you know, you bring in your food faster. You can go up a little faster and you can get more scouts out faster as well. So hey, I don't mind that one, but Continuing with scouts and cavalry until castellation, until imperials, that might be difficult because it's gonna pro prompt Viper to go for spearmen and, and pikemen. He said, if you go for archers as Franks, I know you're up against Britons, it's not ideal, but say you go for skirmishers or something like that, you can thin out, uh, you can thin out uh, the numbers for uh, for your opponent. At the same time, they're not gonna make spears against. Uh, against skirmishers, right? That that would be silly. As uh, Viper is trying to escape uh, with the scout. There's a spearman here as well, so yeah. Now, Viper is completely open still. No walls for him. Gaspar has walled most of his base here. He's getting the back of his base walled. His villagers are walled in into the wood line. Uh, again, the way he has walled... Now, this wood line is not very safe. This wood line is also not very safe. It's the only two safe wood lines he can take, though. Well, it's very far away, so I understand that it's very open. So, like I said, it's desertified Arabia. It's more deserty than ever. Uh, the scouts, but again, the scouts could find damage in Viper's base. He's playing open for now, which is a risk with archer sieves because it takes a while to get your archers around. And if you send them forward, that means they can't protect your home base. So, Kasfi, he just need he just needs to make up a de decision here what he wants to do. I don't think he should be fighting this ball of archers. Probably not. That's what skirmishers are for. Skirmishers he is making right now. Again, see, that's good. You know, adding some some ranged units yourself here to deal with uh, potential spearmen, to deal with potential archers. That is good. I like that. Unfortunately for him, Viper's got his scout alive, and he's using that scout as well to get some value out of that. And that scout could kill both these units, and aye, aye, aye. That's uh, good, I'd say. I said it could, but it's not, it's not gonna. 
as Viper dropping his own stable, and Gaspar does see that, so he does know now. Now that Gaspar has gone for some range unit, it looks like Viper wants to get some stable units out. As oh, quick wall for Viper fails, and the villagers, a villager is gonna go down here. These are Frank Scouts, they are very tanky indeed. Uh, you know, so Viper again played open, no quick walls yet. As uh, looks like Gaspar is gonna commit to the spearman, pulls away his scouts, gets the scout, uh, the, the spearman without too much damage. But Viper quick walls in his fails nonetheless. It's not ideal, but it's as good as it gets here. As uh, Gaspar stand ground, it's gonna run away from, from the archers, very good. Yeah, you can't you can't take the fight against this many archers. Eight archers will beat these scouts with uh, that much HP. Uh, no way. As uh, Kasva, oh, uh, he saw the foundation getting deleted, and he thought that Viper was uh, gonna send free his villagers again. But unfortunately, Viper just deleted the house foundation because he wasn't gonna finish it. Archer number steadily growing here for the snake. And that's the thing with, with Britons that is so frustrating and so scary about them. Is that no matter what you do, they almost always freaking get a ball of archers going. They almost always build their numbers. Especially made easy by the fact that their archer ranges produce faster. And you have you feel like you have to punish that somehow. You have to do damage. But what are you going to do with this small army? With uh, some upgrades, but not, I mean, well, all upgrades that they could get right now. It's its just not enough to defeat this many archers already. Britons are always going to outspam you. So I wonder what Casper's going to do here. If he's going to try to get it to Castle Age first. Uh, if he's going to try to go for some feudal play. I mean, he added two archer ranges, so. I mean... Two archer range, that's a lot of investment though, for if you're just gonna go skirm, but also archer, so I guess that's the idea, but yeah, Viper is just mercilessly hunting down these uh, these units here for the Turkish player. Ay 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 ay. Yeah, Viper looking strong. Looking much stronger than he did last week. You know, last week, uh, Saber name gave him a lot of uh, trouble, and this time around, Kaspa is, uh, you know, he's trying his best, and he definitely did his best the first game. There was a lot of excellent early pressure, but... It's also Britons, and Franks just struggle against Britons, period, right? Like, until Castle Age, you don't really have good tools to deal with this. At all. Like, you need to get some plus two knights out, so perhaps maybe Castle is going to try to get up to the next stage, but oh, look at that. Look at the resources. Uh-oh, yep. Looking pretty good there for the Viper. He's going to click up. Yeah, he's just going to run right back with his archers. He doesn't care about killing this right now. He just wanted Kasva to not come forward. As now, suddenly Kasva saw, probably noticed that Viper dropped under his score. So he should know. He should know. As well as the archers being pulled back. More archer ranges going up. Oh, God. It's disgusting. It's disgusting. It's so good. As uh, Viper also controlling this hill, still microing against these uh, these these uh, skirmishers, trying to get as many kills as he can. Snipes the weak archer, another archer going down. Just good stuff. Actually, I think he sniped the other archer, but the weak archer took a stray arrow and then died anyways. It's losing a bit of number here now, losing a small bit of number there. But in the end, Gasp is still in castle and feudalate, and it's gonna take him a while to get up here. Although 70 farms, right? That's a way better farming economy than it was last time. Now, he's uh, farming big time now. And that's not to go all in scouts. It's to get up the castle as fast as he can. Putting on pressure on Viper as good as he can as well. But four ranges. The Viper wants a crossbow, crossbow monster army. That's for sure. Viper defending his gold right now. He hasn't... This, this archer range is kind of blocking the hill. You know, the hill he could use to, to, build, to put his archers on for now. That's for trying to do damage on the gold for Viper. He knows if he can stop the golden gum for Viper, maybe the, the the spam will stop as well. As, ooh, Kaspar, 700 gold. Buy your way up, buy your way up. Oh, please, buy your way up. Get a market down. Yes, exactly. I was thinking about that as well. Oh, okay, thank God. He's going to buy his way up because he knows Viper should be up in a second. And Viper, five seconds away. Four, three, two, one, and ouch. Britons have more range than you. And that's the thing with Britons. The six range instead of five. Aye, aye, aye. It's just gonna be crossbow. And then we got Buck and Arrow coming out. And then it's just. As Caspa has now macroed his way up, you know, using some market abuse. But still, I mean. This is classic Snake. It's just like, what do you do to punish this? You know. 
maybe a bit more aggression, maybe way more scouts, you know, upgrade on scouts, commit a few lates with, with, with a sip like Franks, maybe. But still, I mean, it's just it's just very clean place. Not taking a whole lot of risks here, the Viper. And as a result, hasn't lost a single villager yet. Has killed two villagers, though, so there's that. Uh, as well as, yeah, Kaspa is trying to micro against this, but you can't. You lack range, you lack the attack uh, damage. You just, you just can't fight this. You just can't. As soon as uh, uh, the Ballistics comes in, which uh, the Snake is going to get in a, as soon as he can afford it, it's an expensive upgrade. Uh, ballistics is in, and these crossbows will be even more deadly. As uh, yeah, Kaspa is going to switch into stables, obviously, it's Franks. That is not a surprise to me. Getting his cavalry armor upgrade is going to get some knights out. Now, uh, luckily for him, right, there's no spearmen on the field. So no pikemen on the field for the viper either. He didn't have to deal with continued scouts thing. So that at least is an advantage, right? It's It means that... It means that the viper... Uh, I mean, he's expecting knights. It means that Kaspa might be able to do some damage against these crossbows without having to run away for, uh, uh, run away for Pikeman. As he has towered the middle as well, which means that he can't uh, uh, drop another town center. And adding economy is very important as a as a cavalry player because knights are expensive. He can't do it forever. So I hope at some point he gets at least a bit of uh, stone out to, just to, um, well, just to uh, get town centers up as well. Try to go for a gate wall there, but that does not work. And the crossbows make their way to the gold. No, Caspa has to run away from the gold now. Ay ay ay. That's a that's 14 crossbows already. Not a lot of upgrades on your cavalry just yet. Caspa feels the need to go to fight here, but yeah, it's just GG. It's just GG, and it's frustrating, right? It's frustrating how little you can do against it. It's just, that is the beauty of, of playing strong macro play. That's always what Viper is really good at. It's just playing safe, getting a boom going, or just going for uh, for an army, and just taking no damage whatsoever. Uh, you know, not not even by uh, by by having uh, expert defense. He did have expert defense, but sometimes just by uh, out strategizing your opponent, just making it impossible for them to do damage to you. And this was just yeah, he just makes it look easy, right? He just makes it look easy. And Britons are definitely definitely a scary ship to play against, especially because you know what's coming. You know the crossbow ball will keep growing. It will never stop growing. And yeah, Kasva. You know, he was he did he did a great job making it to the round of sixteen, but he probably also recognized that Viper still outclasses him. You know, but Gasa still needs to grow a little bit as a player himself. Uh, although he got close to beating Viper in the AOE four, so you know, there's that. But now let's hope that Kasper here can take a game off of Viper because I don't, you know, I mean we all expect the Viper to win here. I think Kasper knows that knows that as well. But I, I, I want him to win one game here. That's what I want. You know, another set that goes to four games. That's what I want here. Uh, we can have a quick look at the statistics, but there's not going to be a whole lot to see this time, right? Kitty, much better for the Viper. You know, and that's having crossbows definitely helps you there. Economy wise, it's close, but Viper just went up the castellates. You know, and it's. That's what he wanted to do, so he did it. No count, very equal. And then APM. <laughs> as soon as Viper gets his crossbows out and his archers out, he's just microing like a god. One second, I got the hiccups again. Let me drink a sip of water. That's much better. I hope. Any case, um, let me check if the next game is started. Yep, they're gonna go straight into game three. So let's uh, let's get into that as well, if you don't mind. Uh, you know, because want to don't want to fall behind too far. And da, 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 da. let's see if I can find it in the lobby. There it is. Very nice. Let's spectate that with capture age. And how long do we have to wait? Uh, do we have some time to look at the draft? Maybe speculate 40 seconds. Okay, uh, we got 40 seconds. 40 seconds. Dun -dun 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 -dun. Um, let's see. So we got Kasva losing with Franks, unfortunately. Britain's win for the Viper. So what is Kasva gonna do here? Try to go on for Saracen. That is YOLO play. Franks with Cavalry. Perhaps he... I mean, he doesn't really have an Archer Sif, really. So 
We are Mongols. I don't think he's gonna try that because that, that's too risky. Khmer, maybe Sicilians. I'm gonna. Indians could work as well as a boom sieve. Maybe he wants to add boom viper or something because he's gonna be up against Mayans, Burgundians, Huns. Yeah, he's have good booms as well. Uh, I'm gonna bet Sicilians. That, that, put my money on that. Probably wrong, but uh, yeah, it's wrong. It's 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 completely wrong. Completely wrong. No problem. And just because I put my money on it doesn't mean that it has to be true, obviously. As, oh, with a bit of lag there, capture rates having struggling there. Awesome stuff. Now, we're here. Welcome to the third game. And Kasva has gone for Mongols. Like I said, <laughs> and I just said he wasn't going to do it because it would be too risky. But he is going to do it then. Uh, well, hey, uh, that, that, it's no great gains without great risks, huh? As we have the Viper here going for Mayans. I mean, it's just, bre it's just the bread and butter stuff, you know, that his gameplay is made of. It's gonna be... Yeah. I mean, uh, Kasva might come forward to lame here. He's actually... He is actually doing that right now. There is the scout. It's looking for... It's looking for an elephant to kill. And oh, he's gonna miss this elephant on the front. Please tell me he's gonna go to the north. Yes, look, look, look. You can see it. You can see it. Uh, don't show your scout, though. There's the elephant. Where's Viper Scout? Viper Scout is going for it as well. Is Kasper gonna lame it? Yep, there he goes. Steal some uh, sheep as well. But Ka oh, see, see that? Viper noticed it. He he, mo he moved that sheep to the other side. Uh, so he is aware of this now. Yep, bringing back his eagle. Now, the thing with eagles is they're not as fast. Not as fast as scouts as... Wait, is he gonna go for the goats first? He just misses that. Just didn't see those. Because he can't see them, of course. That's, uh, yeah, Viper. Is he just gonna block his elephant? Is he gonna... Uh, try to kill the scout, maybe. Well, it's hard to do because you're not as fast as uh, Kasva. Uh, just trying to keep that that elephant within his line of sight. You know, it's three tiles for the elephant. As uh, as Kasva is gonna run around. Don't take a hit on your scout, though. That would be an, an unideal, as you would say. <laughs> That's not the word, obviously. Viper still blocking this. Blocking this as good as he can. Kasva taking a hit on the scout. This is good. This is good. You, like, you, it's two ways to go about this. Either you kill the scout yourself. Uh, either by killing it. Or by making the elephant do it. Or you block the elephant and make sure that the elephant stops chasing. But I don't think... I don't think that Viper can stop this now. That elephant is for Kasva. For the Mongol player. And uh, But Viper not taking any damage on his scout. Look what he's gonna do. He's like, okay, you lame me, I lame you. I lame you. Oh, it's gonna be close, it's gonna be close. As, oh, the viper, he sees it, he sees the villager go now. Let's see if he can lame the vill. Oh boy, the villager, uh, oh, the villager could die to this, actually. And one vill da down, doesn't have loom, and the viper's like, yeah, I'm gonna get that, I'm gonna get that boar, or not. He might not try to go for that, because remember that Kasva can always chase him down. Uh, so instead, I guess he's just gonna hang around here. Kasva's gonna get loom, and then he can get his, uh, his, his elephant. So yeah, the viper... Potentially, right? It's a oh, nice gate block there as well. A uh, nice gate block as the Viper tries to break through, tries to deny this villager access to run back, but it has loom, so it should be able to survive this. And the Viper is gonna run away now. Uh, unfortunately for him, no other boars and uh, no, uh, no other elephants anymore because those have all been taken in. As you can see, all three right dead. And the Mongol players got three hunt. Very nice. Because, of course, they collect food faster, so you can get a whole lot more food out of this. Uh, and very fast, too, so don't set back your economy or anything, you know. Those villagers will eat through that elephant meat quite quickly. And Kasva still has decent HP on his scout, and now that Viper's scout has uh, taken some damage, it might not even be a close fight. Uh, it might be a way more close fight, I mean. Because normally the Eagle Scout should beat, this, should beat the, the scout cavalry, I still think it would. Uh, HP wise, but in any case, Kaspa can still. No! 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 Are you kidding me? Are you kidding me? Look what he's doing! He's pushing in! He's pushing in Viper's Hunt! He's pushing in Viper's Hunt! I mean, Viper can see this! He can see this happen right now! As he's pushing in his own ostrich. I don't think Viper's gonna care even. He's like, yeah, if you wanna spend your time micring that, good luck with that. Jesus Christ! I mean, wouldn't Slam be proud? I bet Slam is watching this right now, and he's like, "Yeah, boy, go for it." Gotta love it though, Kasva pushing out, uh, pushing some hunt across the map. I and mean, look how far that is too. That came from all the way over here. 
If you can do it, hey, it's extra food and Mongols will love it. And he still has his own hunt as well to push in. Um, though I'm not sure if he's going to have the time to do that, though, because there's going to be other jobs. I think at this point, you might as well mill that. Uh, it's probably worth it. And, yeah, Ostrich goes in. I guess, uh, I guess at least even if Casper doesn't win this game, he has uh, definitely flexed his uh, deer pushing skill there. No. Very good. Yeah, but the thing is, you're about to get to a few late. You don't have the time to push in deer anymore. Like, that kind of stuff, you can't really do. You have to scout your opponent. Uh, because, again, Kasva didn't have a whole lot of scouting because he went for the lame. As a result, you sacrifice scout information. Uh, Barracks coming up now for the Viper. Of course, a bit later. Build a farm to balance out his economy a little bit. Yeah, just good stuff all around. Yeah, Kasva is still pushing in his, his Zebra. Uh, as this Zebra is not really cooperating, but he's just pushing them to the mail. Yeah, that's, that's actually smart. That uh, saves you a bit of time here. Uh, you don't have to spend so much time pushing. Still can take his goats as well. Those are right there. These villagers will just uh, go and chop some wood. And then look at that food count. Look at that food count. 500 food up first. Uh, you know, faster. And you can make all the scouts that you want in the world. It is... The ideal situation for Mongols, as Viper's just gonna go straight archers again. I mean, that worked last time, but remember, this time around he got lamed, and Kasva has Mongol, so, you know, scouts with more, uh, more HP as well. Wait, is that true? No, that's not true. But they have more HP on their Hussars, though, so... Hmm. And light gap. Maybe it starts only with light gap, and maybe only in castlate or something like that. I don't know what the bonus exactly is, but uh... now, uh, of course, archers for Mayans. That that is not a that's a no brainer. That is no surprise to anyone, right? I mean, it's it's like Britons. I mean, it'd be weird. It'd be a weird world in which Viper goes for eagles, honestly. As the eagle goes down, because it cannot run away from this scout, and yeah, with that, although Viper is actually making an eagle. He is actually making an eagle. More than one eagle, actually. Oh, no, wait, that was a spear, but never mind. Makes an eagle. That might be for scouting. That might also be for countering. Uh... I'm not sure what you would counter that with. What you would counter with that, though. Because eagles don't counter cavalry. Eagle warriors do. Eagles do not. Right? When you get the upgrade, you get... Uh, eagle warriors get three bonus attack versus cavalry. It's hidden, but you can see it with capture rate, right? As, ooh, guys, we're taking a hit on the scout. That's unfortunate. But yeah, eagles do not counter. They don't counter um, uh, scouts. At least eagle scouts do not. That would be kind of uh, broken, wouldn't it? Uh, if eagle scouts also countered scout cavalry. I mean, there would be no way for the scout cavalry player to ever beat uh, eagles. Ever. No way. Even in the early scout fight, right? It's already in favor for the eagle anyways, because it has more, uh, more a attack. But, you know, and a bit more HP. Scout numbers getting up a, a little bit higher. Also, an archer follow-up from Caswell. The scouts are still here. They're not attacking uh, Viper just yet. Viper is on two spearmen. Starting to get his uh, build his numbers as well. He's going for eagles and archers at the same time. Now, your archers are cheaper. So, that, there is definitely that. As Caswell is going to pounce on that early army. But there is some spearmen in there. Has to snipe those with his own archers. As the archers go down, the spearmen doing a lot of damage versus the scouts. Lots of those are weak now. But the army for Viper does go down as well. Okay, these are better, definitely better in a favor of Caswell here. And yeah, there goes the skirmisher. That's not going to go well if you're up against scouts. In the meantime, Caswell also walling, uh, walling his base a little bit. Unfortunately, does not know about this wood line. So he could have walled there. A little bit less walling, bit sort a bit safer as well. So you know, whatever. Right side is gonna be difficult to wall though. He's got gold in the back, nicely on the, on the hill, so that's nice. Uh, we got berries in the back, so again, Kasva is not complaining about anything. Uh, Viper has gold in the back. It's kind of on the slopes of the hills. So it's not the best in the world there, but at least it's in the back. So there's that. Uh, as to as for the berries are in the front, but they're about to uh, run out as well. So. And, you know, that, that's not really any of your concern anymore. As Viper sees the, uh, the scouts come in from the left, right to his gold, will send his army to deal with that. Uh, you know, the spearmen will be here as well. But deal with that, well, they can't stop the scouts from still engaging against the villager. But because there's spearmen around, Kasva doesn't want to commit all his scouts because he doesn't have any upgrades on him. So that would just be suicide. 
As ooh gets into the woodland though, not quick well by the snake, and he could lose a village there as Kaspa blocks, gets the will as well. Nice snipe there for Kaspa. First villager kill of the game as well. Now 34 to 34 villagers. A little bit of ILTC time for Kaspa making up the difference there. Reinforcements from Kaspa though destroyed by the Eagles. Eagles, of course, with their extra Pierce armor, or high base Pierce armor, I should I say. Well, I mean it's only two. It's not a whole lot. It, it's really Eagle Warriors that are that are the, the good unit, not so much Eagle Scouts. That's why no one goes Eagle Scouts in Feud Late. It's too expensive and they're not just not great units, really. Um, yeah, Castor's gonna run away with his scouts. Ooh, selling a stone now, so he wants to get up to Castle faster. So that decision has been made. He wants to go to Castle and go all in there. Because that's the thing, right? If you want to do what MBL did, get to Mangadite, you have to boom. You have to boom. All the upgrades are too expensive. You gotta get villagers out. But he probably realizes that if he waits that long, by that time, Viper will have a million archers. And if Viper has a million archers, you can make all the Mangadite you want. You're not gonna beat the, you're not gonna beat the snake. Yeah, look at the archer numbers already. 11 archers on the field. It's growing exponentially from two archer ranges. You know, you don't see this quite as often anymore from pro professional players where they go double range uh, in, into a lot of archers. But if your opponent is not making skirmishes, which uh, Kaspar is not, he, you know, he may, he's making archers himself as well, then why not? Especially with Mayans. You can get a whole lot of archers out. And so there's a beautiful ridge on the right side of Castle's base. Lots of nice positions to be taken. And oh boy, the fun is only beginning for the Viper now. Castle is not walled. He's clicked up to Castle, but he has to survive for a minute and a half. And then beyond that as well, because it's um, going to be tricky. I mean, the Spearman and the Eagles there definitely not helping matters as well. It means you have to bring out at least four knights to clear this. At least four. Because you gotta have enough to kill this um, infantry army while at the same time surviving volleys by archers and not having the second arm upgrade because I don't think he can afford that. As, oh boy, the cold. This is the last stand for Caspa. He has to keep his archer numbers up here and make sure Viper can't get there. He can't drop a tower because he sold a stone, right? Sold a stone. Viper just clicked up to the castellate and he's just, yeah. Building numbers at home, another archer range, just like that. Four archer ranges, just like the last time. He's just going to go for a whole bunch of archers. It's going to be crossbows anytime soon now. As Kaspa is desperately trying to defend his gold. He has to defend the gold. If he doesn't have gold, no knights for you. And no knights, no base. He's, it's, it's a risky take going all in castellates here. Especially when you're behind like that. Now knights can start to come out. But again, no upgrades on those whatsoever. Not even skill barding. Which means these archers do two damage to them. Uh, if not three. Three damage to the knights. Aye, aye, aye. Do have bloodlines though. So there's that. As our castle's micro has been pretty solid there. Fighting with villagers when necessary as well. But now the archers are gone. And now you have to abandon the gold. Hopefully not for too long. A few knights should be able to clear this now. Although, again, not having skill barding armor means that these archers do a lot of damage to the knight. That's not an upgrade I think you could you could miss here. I think I'd rather I'd rather just have fewer knights than have skill than lack skill barding armor. I mean look at look how much damage a few feudal arm archers do against knights. That shouldn't happen, right? That should not happen like that. But it uh, it does happen because you don't have the upgrade. But Viper, I mean, he's lost some archers over here. He's going to be okay with that. But, uh, you know, he got some evil kills, just like Kasper did. Twenty archers. Twenty archers on the field. I mean, it's starting to look exactly like it did last day, yesterday. Except now, Knight's coming forward. Again, no upgrades on these. Ah, uh, get the upgrades. You need upgrades. Otherwise, these Knights are just going to die to this. Look how many archers that is already. Oh, it's going to be crossbow too. There's still no upgrades on these knights. Scorpion's coming out. and Oh, boy. Yeah, the thing is, he's going all in. But is it going to save him here? Not when your opponent goes all in crossbows. For now, it is all in for Viper. But he's just going to add a TC as soon as he have to, has the wood to afford it. He's just going to get a lot of archers out. Archers that are not scared of a puny scorpion on a hill. Yep, that scorpion is going to go down. For sure, the second one will probably go down as well as it tries to shoot down some crossbows. And yeah, now you have this many crossbows on the, on your face. 
Gasper trying to counter deck with some knights. Gets in on the gold for the Viper. This is good. This is good. This is good. But look at that. So many knights going down. That's an expensive army. Right? Especially when you only have 42 villagers. You know, expensive as hell. No upgrades on that whatsoever. Except bloodlines. It's not... It's not going to be good enough. It's not going to be good enough. Viper is going to find a way into your base. It's going to come from the other side now. And now Gaspar cannot tower. Has to abandon the gold. And now you can't make knights anyways. Thumb ring coming in as well for the Viper now with, uh, with Mayans. And there you go. A giant ball of crossbows makes their way into your base. What do you do? Uh, panic and resign, I guess. Uh, well, in most cases. I think most of us would probably panic and resign here. And Kasva, I mean, like, it is the third game. And normally you'd say, oh, it's the last game. They will never resign, you know, hold on as long as they can. But it's also, it's the third game against the Viper. You haven't been able to do significant damage to him. He's just been outplaying you at every corner. You've always been behind in Vilt Counts. And yeah, Kasva says, GG, good luck next. And that's what I was thinking. Again, this is live. I cannot predict the GGs. But did you did you not just get that feeling from the, the way that, that Kasva was playing? Also, the fact that all his knights had died. Yeah, and also, like... When you're the underdog player and you just go down 3-0 against the Viper. And too bad for uh, Kasva as well that it has to be 3-0. Uh, you know, that's just... After the second one, it must be very demoralizing. You know, it's like, uh, do I even want to continue here? It's it's probably not going to work out for me. Now, that doesn't mean you shouldn't try, uh, right? I mean, like, even MBL, uh, Vinchester, Vinchester got that, got that win against MBL. It was a really good one as well. But definitely never give up. Uh, but if you're this far behind crossbows on your gold, uh, remember the only gold that Kasva had access to because that's not safe and neither is that gold. You know, so you can't make knights. I mean, the all-in was not going to work here, uh, unfortunately. Definitely not helped by the fact he didn't have skill barring armor, but I don't think it would have made that much of a difference because it's just so difficult to fight this many crossbows. It really is. Especially as Mongols. Like, what do you do here? Mid game is, is really your weak spot. And Mayans shine in the mid game. It's, Mayans shine any time of the game. They're just a, a, such an OP sieve. Yeah, looking at the statistics here. Yep, da -da -da -da. Slightly better KD for the Viper, that, but that would have changed uh, uh, very rapidly here. Still think the first game was probably the best game for, for Kasva. He definitely did a great job with the aggression. I think he should have continued doing that, honestly. I know it didn't work that game, but it's also because the map for Viper was, you know, he had back goals too, you know. Goals that were in, in, far enough back that he could expand with DCs, you know. So, uh, keep it up. Keep up that that pressure. That, that might have worked, but uh, yeah. Yeah, GG.